All right, so this is going to be the fourth day that we've spent on lesson A5. And we're going to be solving polynomial and absolute value equations. All right. So for example one, we're just going to solve. This first example is going to be the polynomial equations. So for A, we have x cubed minus 5x squared minus 2x plus 10 equals 0. All right, so this is one like you had on the very first day of class, just some review equations. And when there's four terms, what you're going to do is solve by grouping. So I like to just kind of like separate them with a dashed line to have four terms, divide them in two equal pairs. All right, and then we're going to factor a common factor out of each group. So the first group, the common factor is x squared. And when you factor it out, you're left with x minus 5. All right, and then no matter what, in the second group, you're going to want to factor out a negative. So if that, thir or that third term is negative, you do need to factor out a negative. And the common factor is going to be negative 2. All right, and so we're left with x minus 5. And this is what you want to see when you're factoring by grouping. And um, we have the same thing left after we factored out. And so now we're ready to finish factoring. And what you factored out is one of your factors. What was left over is the other. And if you wanted to, you can multiply that back out and you would get the original problem. But to solve by factoring, we're going to set each one of those equal to zero. All right, so we would go ahead and add that two and take the square root. Now, don't forget that when you solve equations by finding the square root, you have to do the positive and negative square root. All right, and then for this one, that's just going to be 5. So this polynomial function has three roots or three solutions, and that matches with the largest exponent. And it doesn't have to, but the largest exponent is the most that you could have. All right, let's look at another one. For B, we have 6x cubed minus 27x squared minus 54x. All right, now we're not going to factor this one by grouping because we don't have four terms. So what we can do is factor out a common factor, and that common factor is definitely going to have an x. And if you look at 6, 27, and 54, the largest factor they have in common is 3. So we'll just go ahead and factor out a 3x by dividing each term by it. Okay, and then we're left with a trinomial. And we've already worked on factor and trinomial, so hopefully you're feeling okay about this. But to get 2x squared, we're going to use 2x and x. This tells you your signs are going to be different. So I'm just going to put plus and minus. We might have to switch them in a second. All right, and then what we put here and here are going to need to multiply together to give you 18. So we could use 1 and 18. We could use 2 and 9. We could use 3 and 6. So you just can try whatever you want to. It does end up being 3 and 6. Um, I know I can't put the 6 with the 2x because I have a common factor. All right, and then you set each one of these equal to 0. And we get 0, negative 3 halves, 
and six. And I actually really hope that you can just look at those factors and tell me the solutions. So on this one, when there's a coefficient for x, remember you do the opposite of the three and then you divide by that coefficient. All right, let's talk about some absolute value equations. So I'm gonna make up a super easy one, the absolute value of x equals five. So think about what numbers have an absolute value of that's equal to five. So they're five units away from zero on the number line and there's two numbers, there's five and there's negative five. And so when we do these absolute value equations, there are gonna be two equations you have to solve. One is the positive value and one is the negative value. So on example two, we're gonna solve. Our equation is the absolute value of two X plus six is equal to four. All right, so um, that 2x plus 6 could be 4, or that 2x plus 6 could be negative 4. Because that would give you, when you take the absolute value of it, give you 4. All right, so this is just two equations to solve by subtracting <clears throat> and then dividing. And there it is. Now they can get a little more difficult because we can get some quadratics in there. So let's look at B. For B, we have the absolute value of x squared plus 6x equals 3x plus 18. All right, so we're not going to let this mess with us. So we are going to take what's inside the absolute value and leave it exactly like it is, all right, and drop down the other side. Or what's inside the absolute value looks exactly like it is, and then it's going to be the opposite of the other side. Okay, and so this is two quadratic equations that we're going to solve. So we will get everything on one side by subtracting the 3x and then subtracting the 18 or moving the 18 over. So we do similar things over here. We would add the 3x and move the 18 over. Okay, and so from here, it's just fairly simple factoring. So x is going to be negative 6 and 3. And then over here, x is negative 6 and negative 3. So I would go ahead and just write, combine those together. So negative 6, 3, negative 3 are your three solutions. All right, now we are going to want to check that real quick just to make sure that they, that they all check out. Um, let me just do that. So if we put in negative 6, that's going to be, um, it would be 0 equals 0, which is true. I'm going to put in 3. I get 27 equals 27. And then when I put in negative 3, oops. I don't think I 
1993 works. Let me just do oh wait. Yes, it does. Sorry. Negative three works just fine. So they all work out. So sometimes you can get those extraneous solutions, but this one is good. All right, let's look at C. C is the absolute value of 2x minus 5 equals the absolute value of x minus 7. So we're going to do this identical to how we started off B. Even though there's the absolute value on both sides, I'm just going to choose to leave the left side alone. So bring it down just like it looks. And then I'm going to leave the left side alone and do the opposite of the right. There's no reason to do the opposite of both because you're going to go ahead and get an answer that you would already get for that first equation. So just leave the first one alone. And then second problem, um, leave the first uh the left side alone without the absolute value and then change both sides on the right side. Okay, so we'll get our x's together and move five over. Get our x's together. Move five over and divide. So we get our two answers and they both should check out. So it looks like you get the absolute value of negative 9 equals absolute value of negative 9, which is true. And then you get, let's see, the absolute value of negative 3 equals the absolute value of negative 3. So they both work out perfectly. Okay, so let me give you guys your assignment. Um, so we're still working on that page I printed. For you. If you're using an actual textbook, I changed, I think I changed 92 through 94. So look at the actual, the sheet. They're a little bit different. 